Hi guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. And this is probably a helpful video rather than a vlog video. I tend to not do like too many instructional videos because I don't know very much. And there's so many good ones out there. However, it's come to my notice or I've realised I guess that there's after after live stream a couple of nights weeks ago or last week or whenever it was I showed some verniers um, this pair in particular and I used these in my TMC 2020 video uh, if you're not sure what TMC 2020 is it's a tool making competition check out the hashtag TMC 2020 and check out the playlist which is down in the description. And above all, go and enter. But what I heard back, some feedback, is that no one knows how to read, or many people do, but there are a couple of viewers in this channel that struggle a bit reading manual vernius or ordinary old-fashioned plain vernier scale. Lots of things have vernier scales on them, and if you can read one, then good measuring equipment gets a bit cheaper. This is a brand new Mini Max set of verniers that my dad bought me for my birthday. They're really no, pretty nice, I think, for the money he paid for them. They're, they're not shabby at all, and they're nice and easy to read. So the whole old-fashioned thing is, and the whole... I can't see any more thing, probably doesn't really apply. But let's have a look at them. There's lots of things that have a vernier scale on them like this, my height gauge does. The micrometer is basically the same. Uh, it's the same scale, this one's actually got an extra scale on it as well and we'll have a look at that. But this is just a plain vernier scale and when it's closed this reads at zero it's very simple and if you can read a ruler you can read one of these it's basic counting and, and reading um, this is marked on the inch side anyway and we're going to work on the inch side here the metric side is basically the same but on the inch side this is in tenths of an inch or one hundred thousandths of an inch. So um, one mark there is one hundred thousandths, two hundred thousandths, three hundred thousandths, nine hundred thousandths, and a thousand thousandths or an inch. And this here is twenty-five divisions, which is the number of thousands of an inch between there and the first little tiny mark. If you can see that, the first mark there is 25 thousandths of an inch. And that's div this scale here over one inch is divided up. This one here, which is Mauser from Germany, um, or oh, probably East Germany, it says foreign on here. But that's exactly the same. It's a little bit harder to read, but it's really not too difficult. So what happens is if we move this one hundred thousandths of an inch, this lines up the same on zero as it did before, only we read the one. So this zero mark and this 25 mark, they both line up exactly on the lines. So how this, so this scale divides each little division up into 25 parts and each division is 25 parts long so we can effectively measure one thousandths of an inch on this scale very very easily if we set this somewhere halfway between 0 and 25 one of these marks here will line up on one of these marks and we need to work out which one it is 
the tens just a fraction too far. Eleven, twelve, the thirteen. The fourteen is not far enough, so it's thirteen thousandths of an inch. The thirteen lines up there, and as simple as that. The first mark here is zero, and the next mark we're not far enough, so it's somewhere between zero and twenty-five. And if we look to see which one of these lines up, it's thirteen. So that's thirteen thousandths of an inch. If we do it again, we know that we're past the five hundred and we're past the twenty-five. So if we add whichever number lines up onto 525, that will give us exactly the dimension here. 525 plus which one lines up. So if we do this again, if we want to measure something up here, we're 3 inches, we're 800 there, And it's 850 and we're just just a fraction before no nope, we're just a fraction after so 500 three inches 851 thousandths of an inch so very very simple thing to read is a vernier on some bulkier vernier scales um, in particular vernier height gauge you get a thing called parallax error which basically if you've got two lines on a different plane and you look at it sideways you're going to find that a different line lines up to the the one that it really should be so you do get a little bit of error but if you look at it carefully and straight on you shouldn't have that problem and sometimes you've got to pick up height gauge up off the bench to, to actually read it and see see what it does say. The micrometer is the same. Uh, this is a tenth of a tower. And if we take a measurement with this, it's exactly the same to read. We know that this goes from one zero to one inch, this micrometer. don't think it's actually written on here but we know that to be the case so a 300 thou and then 75 375 is if we look here it's 375 is 3 eighths of an inch anyway a bit more accurate than that 375 and then we've got one two marks so there's 25 marks around here, just the same as the other scale. And we've got 375, 376, 377. However, it looks to be a fraction over 377. If we use this scale around here, which is another vernier scale on top of that one, and see which one actually lines up. And it's two, so that gives us another decimal place. So our actual measurement here on this micrometer is 3752. Uh, that's, that's what we've got to four decimal places. So that's a, anywhere near, well, it's, it's as good as a new one of these from the same factory as the digital one is exactly the same accuracy and it's certainly plenty good enough for home workshop. So that's how to read a scale in Imperial. Metric's much simpler. simpler. This one is in twentieths of a, of a millimetre. So we've got, that's a tenth of a millimetre, twentieth of a millimetre, thirtieth of a millimetre, but also we can go halfway between. So if we want to make a measurement here, we've got 20 millimetres, then one millimetre, and then the mark that lines up is 0.3. So 20, 21.3 is our measurement there. 
And for metric, that's very, very simple. Of course, the metric micrometer is exactly the same. We've got 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 and a half is here. So 19.5, line that up on there, 19.535, something like that. It's very, very, very accurate on a new Midget Toyo Japanese micrometer. So that's how to read a micrometer in a Vernier scale. I hope this is helpful someone. If you've got any questions, post them down here and I will try and answer them or someone will. Um, I'm sure I've missed lots out, but basically how to read a Vernier scale. You need to be able to add up and you need to be able to see which line lines up. Have a look, that's... If we measure this gauge block stack, it's exactly the same to read the gauge block stack. So we stack these up. Um, 160. And almost 101. So to an extra decimal place, it's 107. So we've got 260 and a half. And about six. So our micrometer is out a tenth of a millimeter and that might need some adjustment. And they're easy enough to adjust too. But that's out the side the scape of this, this, um, this video and if I can work to tenths of a thousandth of an inch I'm, I'm really doing pretty good I might sit down and calibrate this but that's how it's done and that's what the mystery I guess behind the mystery I guess behind plain vernier scales it's they're a joy to use and very very simple to, to work out and they don't go flat or turn off or if you put them down, the battery doesn't turn off automatically and you've got to remeasure. And they don't have corrosion problems in a moist and damp environment. They always work. And some time taken to practice reading them and you're, you're on your way. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And more soon, guys and girls.